React is fantastic as a library, just perfect for rendering complex UI applications. But there is one very tiny shortcoming. Once you kind of move into the world of React for your application, you're really adhering to that React philosophy of that downwards data flow and props and state and all that kind of stuff, right? But it ever so happens that there still tends to be a lot of libraries that you want to use that generate DOM elements, like just raw HTML that you still want to get on the page anyways. And a fantastic example of that is Google Maps. So Google Maps has a JavaScript client, and we can look at a little code snippet down here. And here's, here's the code snippet, here's the demo of how to actually use it. So after you include the script tag, you say, okay, make a new Google Maps map and append it to the element with an ID of map right here. So, you know, like go reach out, find a DOM element and render it to that DOM element. But we know that that is not how React works. React doesn't work like that at all. React says, okay, let's nest components within each other. And that somehow produces the HTML that forms our application. We do have a very top level element that gets appended to the DOM, you know, with our React DOM.render call, but that is a single component, the very top, you know, our absolute highest component in our entire hierarchy. So a little bit dissimilar from what's going on here. So how do we get these libraries that we want to make use of, like the Google Maps API, where it tries to render itself to a very particular DOM element? How do we get these two things to play together? How do we merge Google Maps or maybe jQuery file uploader or your favorite tooltips library or whatever else it might be, any arbitrary uh, uh, third party library out there that renders some HTML directly to the page. How do we get that to work with React? So that's the answer that we're going to try to answer today. Or that's the question, excuse me. <laughs> that's the question we're going to try to answer today. How do we get these third party libraries to work with React? And so for a very practical example, we're going to re-implement this example right here. How do we get Google Maps to render inside of a React application without picking up any fancy packages off of NPM, like you know React, Google Maps, or any of those fancy things that just do it for you? How do we do this from scratch? Okay, so let's give this a shot. I've already got a skeleton of a uh, project set up right here. So if I refresh the page, the only thing that's being produced right now is a single div that says map me. That's all there is. If I open up my code editor, and let me dial up the font size a little bit, here we go. You can see that I've already got a index.html file, here it is right here, and I've already included my Google API script tag. So I've got just the raw Google Maps JS file right here. This is the thing that we can call create a new map and append it to this, this DOM element, and a map will appear on the page. So if we were writing just a very vanilla, very plain HTML application, uh, this would work fantastically. But we wanna figure out how to use this with React. The approach that I'm gonna outline here is something that can be reused with any other third-party library that you might think of. So you know, I mentioned uh, jQuery file uploader, if you're using D3 or any plot generating library, just anything that tries to create its own little bit of HTML and render it to the DOM. This is something that, this is an approach that's gonna work with it. So let's look at a diagram and figure out our general approach here. I've got on the screen a diagram of what essentially our application might look like. We might have a top level component and then a couple other just very generic components in here as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a custom wrapper component. So we are gonna make a React component and we're gonna kind of refer to it as being a wrapper of sorts. And this wrapper is going to be responsible for interfacing with that custom library, in, in our case, Google Maps. So inside of this wrapper is where we're going to write a whole bunch of logic that's going to kind of manage the relationship between our React application and this custom library that we're trying to use. So let's give this a shot and see how it looks. I'm gonna make a new component called Google Map. Js, and then inside of here, I'll just put some usual boilerplate just to get started. And then I'll make my class. And for right now, I'm going to render, excuse me, I'm gonna render return, there we go, just a single div. And I'm gonna give it a uh, ID of map in this case. So. This ID of map right here is just to get a little bit of styling to work nicely. We can kind of ignore this for just right now. I just have a little bit of CSS already loaded up here because that's what uh, Google Maps requires to render properly. 
So if I go back over to my HTML document, you can see I got an ID of map and it's got a height of 100% right here. So the ID of map, again, just for CSS. That's the only reason I have it in here. So now back over an app, I'm going to render that map component. So I've got my import Google map from Google map, and I'm gonna place it into my render method. So now I'm gonna go back over to the browser. I'll refresh the page. And okay, here's the element that was just created. I've got my div with ID of map. It's got a height of 100%. So you can see it's like nicely filling up the page right there. So, okay, the element is definitely showing up on the screen. So now let's like actually focus on how we're going to do this uh, implementation here. So here's the general thought. The general thought process is we are trying to render some custom component, some custom like snippet of HTML that is not really going to be necessarily managed by React. Like it's not something that React itself is going to render to the screen. So this wrapper component right here, its job is to be that interface between React and our custom component. To be an interface, here's, here's the steps we're gonna take. We're going to render this component exactly one time to the DOM. So just one time we'll render it to the DOM. When it first gets rendered to the DOM, we will call our custom library, Google Maps here, and we will tell, hey, Google Maps, go render yourself, like go create a map and go shove it into the DOM inside of this wrapper component. And then for every future time that this component tries to re-render, we're going to block it from re-rendering. So if it receives some new set of props or anything like that, if it calls set state, anything whatsoever, we are going to block the component from re-rendering itself because the entire thought process here is that Google Maps, the library, is gonna to be totally in charge of rendering. The component will not be in charge for rendering anything, only Google Maps will. So this is definitely one of those examples where uh, walking through the code I think is a little bit more helpful than a verbal description from me. So let's see how some of this code looks. Remember, step one here is to say we're only gonna render this component exactly one time. So should component update is our lifecycle method that determines whether or not this component will ever get to re-render. So the component will always render exactly one time, and then every future time that the component receives some new set of props, should component update will be called, and we need to either return true or false in here. If we return true, the component will re-render. If we return false, it will not. So I'm going to 100% of the time say, after the first time that this component is rendered to the screen, never re-render it again. So return false. And this is hard-coded. I never want this thing to attempt to re-render itself. Now inside of a component did mount, this is where, you know, again, the component will render one time. And inside of here is where we will create our Google map and append it to the DOM or kind of insert it into the DOM somewhere. So I'm gonna first put in a little bit of configuration for Google Maps to create a new map. So google.maps.map. And then the signature for this, we'll talk about the first argument right here, but the second argument is a little bit of customization for how the map itself works. I'm gonna say center yourself on a latitude of this.props.lat and a longitude of this.props.long. And we'll use a zoom level of eight. That should be good enough. So now here's the key. Here's like the, the real point of interface between these things. On this kind of dummy element that I write, have right here, this div, I'm gonna add a ref of map. And remember the ref system is used to get a direct reference to a DOM element. So I'm gonna tell Google Maps, hey, after the component renders itself in this DOM with a ref of map, exists, or excuse me, this element exists in the DOM, attempt to render yourself to that div. So now after a component is created, you know, this div is sitting on the screen and nothing else is sitting on the screen, component did mount will be called. We will create a new Google map and insert it into that div. And I'm gonna save a reference to it as this.map. Okay, so let's see how this works. Let's see if it's doing anything. Oh, well, it's not going to just yet because I'm not providing the uh, latitude or the longitude. So let's flip back over to my app component, which is containing Google Map. 
I'm gonna go into assign it a uh, latitude and a longitude. So I'll give it a lat, and I'm just gonna hard code this for now. Negative 34.397 and a long of 150.644. Okay, so let's see how this works. I'll refresh the page. And my map appears on the screen. And it's centered in uh, Wollongong, which is I don't know, it's the default location for uh, uh, Google Maps. I don't know why they chose it, but there you go. Actually, if you look at the example, the documentation I just had up, you can see the same latitude and longitude right there. Total side note. Anyway, so again, the life cycle here, the kind of the end to start of this process inside of our Google Map component is we render this component exactly one time, that like initial render. So we take this div and it gets appended into the DOM, or excuse me, it gets inserted into the DOM. Okay, so we've got this div sitting in there and it has a ref of map. Then immediately after it renders, we tell Google Maps or, you know, and again, this could be any other third party library you wanna use whatsoever, anything. In this case, I'm just using Google Maps. So, hey, Google Maps, go and make a new map and then append yourself to this.refs.map, which is this div right here. And then any time that this component then receives some update or any time this component thinks that it should re-render itself in the future, we say, oh, no, 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 don't, don't attempt to re-render yourself. Because if we attempted to re-render the component, it would probably try to dump this Google Map element right here. It would want to just return this div, just as is, just show me this div. Okay, so this at least gets something on the screen. So we've got some level of interaction between React and a third-party library, but we're still missing out on the ability to kind of pass props to this element and update on the fly. So let's say I wanna add a little bit of configuration here. I wanna have the ability to set the uh, longitude and latitude that the map is centered on. So right now it's hard-coded to always look at, you know, this negative 34, 150, which is in Australia, but I want to make this like a, a truly useful uh, map in the React world. So I should be able to pass it a new set of props over time, you know, a new longitude and latitude, and see the map update on the screen. So if I look at the Google Maps documentation, I'm gonna go up to reference right here. And to update the location that a map is centered on, I can use the pan2 method. So with pan2, we pass in a new latitude and longitude, and then the map will like transition over to that new uh, latitude and longitude. So that's gonna be our goal. I now want to add some ability to interface, further interface React with Google Maps. So to do so, I'm going to add in a button inside of my app component right here. So I'm gonna make a button, and I'm gonna say whenever someone clicks on this button, I want to center the map on New York. So if you click on this button, I'm gonna take you to New York. So instead of hard coding our excuse me, latitude and longitude, mixing words up there, instead of hard coding it, I'm going to define these on my pro, uh, state object. So I'll have a lat of negative 34 and a long of 150.644. And then my Google map will receive the lat from this.state.lat and the long from this.state.long. And then whenever someone clicks on this button, I'm gonna say we're going to call set state and we'll pass in a new lat of negative 34, 397, and a long of, oh, excuse me, mixing numbers up here a new lat of 40.7128, and a new long of negative 740059. Okay, so now whenever someone clicks on this button, we're gonna call set state. That is gonna cause this app component to re-render, and a new set of props will be passed down into our Google Map. So we're passing props into Google Map. But hold up for a second right there. We just said that no matter what, this component should never ever update. So how do we kind of take that updated set of props and propagate it, so to speak, over to the Google Maps component? So even though we have this should component update 
statement in here and we are always returning false. We're saying no, never re-render this component. There is still a lifecycle method that is always gonna get called. And that is component will receive props. And it gets called with the next set of props. So even though we've told this component, never try to re-render yourself. Nonetheless, component will receive props is still going to get called. So inside of this component will receive props, we're going to receive that new latitude and longitude from our app component or just the parent component. So effectively, component will receive props is our ability to migrate from one set of props to the next set of props. So we're going to kind of manually handle changes that are received to this component inside of this method right here. And so in our case, I know that whenever I receive a new set of props, I'm going to want to pan the map to some new location. So again, I can use that pan to method that's included within uh, Google Maps. So I'll call this dot map dot pan to, and I'll pass in the new lat, which will be next props dot lat, and long, like so. Uh, just to be really clear, this object in here uh, containing latitude and longitude that is 100% coming from Google Maps. You know, the, the pan to this object, all that stuff, it is 100% part of the Google Maps API right here. So again, uh, you know, pan two, and it takes an object literal that contains a latitude and longitude, just to be really clear. Okay, so I'm gonna save this, and let's refresh. So now I've got my button that says New York right here. My map is gonna start off centered inside of Australia, and when I click on this button to go to New York, it's going to set state on the app component. The new set of props are gonna to go to my Google Maps component, and then I am manually telling Google Maps, hey, you need to instead show this new set of, uh, or you know, this new longitude latitude. So let's give it a shot. I click and I center on New York now. Okay, so that is the general approach here for how we integrate third-party libraries with React. If you use any sort of existing adapter between React and uh, Google Maps, or uh, I use like CodeMirror, which is like a code editor. I use, or you know, to be really clear, I use an integration between CodeMirror and React. All these different libraries that you're using that are these integrations, they're all doing this behind the scenes. And so a lot of the times, you can certainly do this by hand. If you've taken my course on React and Redux over on Udemy, uh, you went through the Google Maps example and we used a third-party component just to make use of Google Maps. And you know, there's definitely good reasons for doing that, but as you see right here, it wouldn't have taken a tremendous amount of code to kind of wire up Google Maps ourselves if we so chose. So before grabbing a third-party library to use React with or to use React with anything else, do kind of sit down and say to yourself, what you know, what functionality do I really need out of this third-party library? Do I really have to grab an integration component or can I just write it myself? Because you know this certainly wasn't too bad right here. Whew, okay, uh, this is a fun one. I really enjoyed this topic. If you like videos like this, uh, I publish weekly videos on React and Redux. Check out rallycoding.com and get on my email list for a weekly video. I'll see you next week.